wait a minute. Are there hot black women in Belgium? God, help! He's a foreign barker! And he's black! You know when he's black, there's gonna be trouble. What the? He's hot, chicky, chai, tall. Ching, tong, tolly, chan. DSP, or as some might know him as Darkseid Phil, or some might know him as the man who jerked off on stream more than once, yes, that was a real thing, is another infamous, controversial, and very problematic personality on the internet. But unlike his counterpart, who shall not be named because I do not wish to invoke the wrath of YouTube again, is not exactly controversial as one might think. Rather, the reason why people remember or even know of DSP is probably because of the memes made about him. Another reason why people know DSP is probably because of some controversies surrounding him and money. And possible tax evasion. <laughs> But before we get into the uh, nitty and the gritty of DSP, I want to address something. The reason why I'm making this video is similar to that of my Matthew Santoro video. I didn't like the original one I made about Phil all that much, and I feel like I could have added more information and maybe made the video overall better. So this is essentially, again, an HD remix definitive edition of the DSP video I made a while ago. If you want, you can go watch that. It's fucking i don't know where youtube puts the fucking not notification or annotation go watch it if you want also this will just be a fun little video of me going through not only the history of dsp but also his present past and quite possibly his future so sit back relax and uh clear your schedule for the next 20 minutes or so because we're going to go in for the long haul ladies and gentlemen who is DSP? DSP or Dark Side Phil or Philip Burnell is a 39 year old man who essentially is a lol cow. Now, what is a lol cow you might be asking yourself? Well, a lol cow is someone who can be milked for laughs, hence the name lol cow. It's a term that's used on the internet for people like DSP who are essentially a laughing stock of the internet and essentially the bottom of the barrel for making fun at. The term is mostly used in Kiwi Farm, but you can find people all over the internet using the term to describe personalities on the internet. But back to DSP. Going more into his past, Philip would essentially gain his start at internet infamy when he first attended a Street Fighter 2 tournament and would win fourth place. Now to some, this isn't anything to brag about or anything to celebrate, but to Philip, it was because he was fourth place after three Japanese players. Because of this, he crowned himself as the best Street Fighter II player in the United States. While technically true, others would disagree since he never managed to reach that position any year after. It was his peak and he grew a big head with this. After EVO and Street Fighter 2 tournaments, his time in the light of competitive EVO faded and he would go on to record videos on YouTube. DSP gained his start from playing Street Fighter 2 and has been on YouTube since the dawn of its inception. He was one of the pioneers of gaming commentary who would point cameras at their TV screen and record themselves playing games. This was from around 2008 to 2013. Keep that in mind for later. Now, these videos were cutting edge back in the day. Essentially 4K 60fps gaming to us plebs back in 2010. If you know a picture, if you know what this is, you are entitled to deserve a, a veteran's discount. But as times have passed, game capturing has progressed to the point where if your video is lower than 720p, there is a high chance that people will click off it faster than a Watch Mojo Top 10. And because of the changing times on YouTube, Philip had to get with the times and change his way of capturing gameplay footage as well. Switching from the crappy 480p resolution that his camera would produce to a cool and crisp 1080p 60fps in 2014. A bit late to the party, but hey, 
Better late than never, I always say. This might not be much of a problem to people nowadays since recording this in 1080p is pretty easy. And recording in 1080p has been very accessible to everyone as of recently. But back in 2013, it was essential for gaming commentaries because everyone was moving over from recording footage from a camcorder to a crisp and nicer looking 1080p. This was also the time where YouTubers would start editing their content and making it more appealing to the audience. This is where most of the hatred for Philip started to accumulate within his fan base because he would make a 52 fucking minute video of him explaining and essentially responding to viewers who have seen a change in Philip. Now listen, I have no problem with making 52 minute long video, but edit it at the very least to make it at least 30 minutes. Th this video is high, like it's, you can edit it and make it, sh make it shorter, but he doesn't want to do that because he's fucking lazy. Editing costs time and time is money for Philip. No matter who you are, people are going to notice that you're changing either as a creator or as a person. For Phil, it's more or less his change as a person and not a creator because, spoilers, his content doesn't change for decades. I am not, I am not hyperballing this. His content has stayed the same from back in 2013 or fuck it even 2008. If you look at a video of Phil from 2014 to one from now, it's essentially the same. I know that some content creators stick to their methods of video making. Like for example, Game Grumps who have made the same gaming videos for a while. But there are a few key things that make their content enjoyable to some viewers. For example, they're funny and they try to make the game they're playing enjoyable to the viewers by making jokes. Also, they have a bunch of different shows and different videos on their channels like Animation and the Power Hour Show. So, that's also another key feature or a key uh, thing that separates them from Philip. I know comparing Phil to Game Grumps is a bit of an extreme, but I'm trying to highlight the fact that his content has been stale for more than a decade now. He hasn't made the effort to learn how to edit and give the video a bit of flair and essentially just records his gameplay and dumps the raw footage on YouTube. Now, you don't need to learn how to edit to be a good YouTuber or have good content. But having even basic knowledge of editing your videos essentially gives your content a bit of flair. And it can also help you edit out parts of the video that can be problematic in the future. Which brings us to our second controversial topic related to Phil. He's uh, his content uh, hasn't aged well. Yeah, wait, wait, I'm racist? Whoa, well, hold on. Hold on. Look, I can tolerate reality, but when you just lie on stream like that, that's some motherfucking bullshit! DSP has been known to spout some very colorful language regarding race in the past, present, and, let's face it, future. Oh, where about you in advance? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I choose the English language. To the point where he would call people out for being racist and acknowledging his racist jokes on stream as being racist after making a racist joke. Oh, he knows that. You have into dust. Oh, would you like to give me some cocaine? There are tons, and I mean tons, of DSP montages of him making racist jokes. And I don't mean light racism or, or some dark humor, but more heavy racist jokes. And he also makes a lot of insensitive and anti-Semitic jokes. Which brings us to the infamous clip of him playing Dead Space 2 and making a certain joke about a certain group of people in a certain accent. To which he responds by saying this. People are sensitive over racist jokes and you get upset when people joke about your gout. Um, because racist jokes are silly if you do them in a general fashion. And what I mean by that is... You can say, oh, what is he playing with my wire? <laughs> He's playing with a wire here. When you make a, a joke that's a racial generalization about a race, so, you know, say something about an, the Italian race or the Chinese or, you know, something like that. The Italian race. Like, he didn't even say fucking ethnic group or anything. He just said the Italian race. 
you fucking moron. Oh yes, I am of the Dutch race. I know how to be Dutch. I I do I do love Hitler. Yes, I Dutch people love Hitler. Yes. That was the worst Dutch accent. I'm fucking Dutch and I couldn't even do a Dutch accent. Wow. Racism aside, I don't want to open that can of worms because I value my sanity. But Philip's content isn't just stale. It's a lot. He uploads not one, not two, but seven videos a day. Which is insane to most YouTubers because uploading seven videos a day sounds like not only a death threat to your fucking cerebral cortex, but also insane. But here's the thing. His content is purely just gameplay and just him talking. Boring, boring content at that. I mean, he tries to have a personality, but it, it falls flatter than Mama in Dread. But anyways, these aren't short gameplay videos like, the, like he used to do 10 minute videos. No, 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 no. These are almost an hour long and he uploads seven videos a day. If I have to listen to Phil in his one note voice talking and failing to making jokes and trying his hardest to fucking have a personality, I, I will waterboard myself with a Kool-Aid juice pouch in the fucking middle of the street. If the like percentage is anything to go off of, goddamn, I have never seen that much red in my life before. Speaking of his channel, you'd imagine that someone with almost 200,000 subscribers would easily break 10,000 views, easily, but not Phil. I think the reason why people don't watch his content anymore, aside from him being boring and one note as a monophonic symphony, is because of how much he uploads a day. Sure, uploading frequently is good for growth in some cases, I guess, but not seven videos a day. You gotta give people a chance to breathe, you know what I'm saying? On the topic of videos, I want you to take a wild guess as to how many videos he has posted in his lifetime. Don't you dare fucking pause this video to look it up. I, I know you're cheating, all right? 1,000? 3,000? 10,000? 20? No, over 60,000 videos. Holy fuck. Honestly, that's fucking insane. Talk about drowning your audience in videos. Now, if we do some math that is probably wrong if it is please tell me in the comment section i try my my best please don't hate me that's almost 13 videos a day but this isn't essentially his only channel though he has another channel called the king of hate vlogs which is essentially a vlogging channel wow oh noble i could have figured that out myself shut the fuck up you you beautiful beautiful person but anyways, the King of Hate Vlogs is a channel where essentially he would host non-gaming related stuff. Here he would hold Q&As and other, you know, non-gaming related things. Essentially a landfill of his other content. These videos kind of boil down to just him talking about himself and what's going on in his life for about an hour or more. And honestly, it's so weird to just hear a man who only plays video games all day talk about his day. He also had a bunch of other channels that I am too lazy to list off, but most of them are inactive except for DSP Gaming or the King of Hate Vlogs. Speaking of him playing games by himself, we gotta talk about him jerking off on stream. Back in May of 2016, Phil accidentally left his face cam on and decided to tickle the pickle a little bit. Strangle the goose, choke the chicken, wank the skunk, have a onesome with his hand, cuffing the carrot, and having a 69 with himself minus the nine. But this wasn't the only time he would commit that sin. In fact, he did it again in 2018, this time with his camera off, thank God. If I had to see and hear Phil's O-Face and his moaning, so did you. Man, it's just so sad to see DSP just essentially eroding as the years keep on going as a creator. He hasn't and most likely will not change his content and his way of making content in the future too. DSP is a prime example of how not to do YouTube. 
He suffers from the same problem as the one that shall not be named because I do not want to invoke the wrath of YouTube. I've already said this before. Name calling players who beat him online and would e-beg for money clicks, views, and even likes. As a creator, you shouldn't beg or guilt your audience for likes or views. That is the core aspect of what not to do as a YouTuber. If you want clicks or views or likes, don't beg. Make good content. Just make good content and have and be passionate of that content you're making. It's easy as that. I wish I had the staples, that was easy button, you know, the one I press, but we don't have a staples here, so that sucks. But unfortunately, Phil didn't get the memo, and this became one of his many downfalls into the spiraling pit of irrelevancy. I guess you could say it's, uh, this is how you don't be a YouTuber guide, get it? Because a lot of the videos, fucking with them, our videos about how you shouldn't play a game. Comedy. That's my middle name. Don't wear it out. Aside from his e-begging, he would constantly take out loans. Also, apparently, he's also evading his taxes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And there's tons of tax write-offs for the self-employed. For example, anything that I buy that's related to the business. A video game, this controller... The cost of ink for the printer that printed out my questions for Ask the King or has anything business related. The cost of electricity in the house. The cost of the internet for the house. All these things are tax deductible, meaning I have to pay for them, but I cannot be taxed on them. Meaning I will not have to pay taxes for the amount of money of stuff that I spend on the business. So if I reinvest money into the business, it helps me because it allows me to pay less taxes on a yearly basis. On the topic of money, Phil's Patreon is looking a little, little, little skinny there. A little, 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 little skinny. I, I do say so myself. The fucking perks he's offering is also so fucking stupid, by the way. Pay $20 so you can be guaranteed to have your question answered on his stream. What a fucking scumbag. Or, or, how about pay him $50 for a 20 minute personalized video of this abomination? No thank you my guy, if I have to hear you talk about anything that I recommend, I will, I will shoot myself, I will commit a Kurt Cobain. But Philip Burnell is a byproduct of a mixture of all the deadly sins. Greed, lust, gluttony, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. And he serves as a sign for other YouTubers to recognize what they should and shouldn't do to become a YouTuber. If you want to know how to become a YouTuber, make content that you're passionate about. Eventually, your passion and your hard work will come to reward you. That's literally all you have to do. But yeah, that was my HD remix video on Phil Burnell, aka Darkside Phil. If you liked the video, you know, leave a like, subscribe. I don't fucking know, I'm not your mom or your dad. Please don't call me Danny in the comments. That's that's weird. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy and hopefully this one stays up because I don't know if Philip is known for copywriting or copy striking videos. Hopefully he does not. But that's going to be it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoy I'll see you guys on the, on the other screen. Whoa. Whoa. This is my finger. Me fingy. Oh, see you guys. Bye.